All right, today we're going to be going over a chemistry practice problem. It employs a lot of different skills that you need to succeed in chemistry, and I think this is a good way to demonstrate them in practice and make sure they're strong. So this is a three-part question. Let's read the question first. So it says, when 75 milliliters of a 0.1 molar lead-2 nitrate solution is mixed with 100 milliliters of 0.19 molar potassium iodide solution, a yellow-orange precipitate of lead-2 iodide is formed. The first part of the question asks, write a net ionic equation for the reaction, include states and charges. Second part asks, what is the mass in grams of the lead-2 iodide formed? And the third part asks, what is the molarity of each of the ions in the resulting solution? And then these are the ions that we're going to write the equation for. All right. So the first part, going back to it, it says write a net ionic equation for the reaction, and we need to include the states and charges in that. So the first thing we should do here is write our, you know, our general equation for the reaction. So let's look at what it gives us. We get lead to nitrates, and this is an ionic compound. Lead to NO3. So the lead has a 2 plus charge, nitrate is a polyatomic ion with a 1 minus charge. So to balance that, we just need 1 lead 2 and 2 nitrates there. Plus potassium iodide, another ionic solution, another ionic compound, excuse me, 1 plus, 1 minus, same deal. And we know that both of these are aqueous because it says that they're both uh, solutions in the prompt. So we'll go ahead and put those in there for states. And it says a yellow orange precipitate of lead 2 iodide is formed. So that right off the bat gives us one of our products. So it says lead 2 iodide. So PB still lead 2 I2. And we know that's a solid because it says a precipitate. Now again, we're just balancing the reactants here. And then the remainder has to be then potassium, potassium nitrate. And this is using our SNAP rule. It has both potassium and nitrate in it. So it is aqueous in water, soluble in water. Now let's balance this. We got our question. Let's just balance this. So we have to put a 2 here, and then we have to put a 2 here. Let's double check. PB, one lead over here, one lead over here, two nitrates over here, two nitrates over here, check. Two potassiums here, two potassiums here, check. Two iodines here. Remember that's transitive to this as well. Uh, and two iodines over here. Okay, so this top part is good, but this is not a net ionic equation. For that, we need to expand everything. So we're gonna just we're gonna do just that. Pb2 plus aqueous plus two and O3 minus. Remember our polyatomic ion. Aqueous there plus two K plus aqueous plus two I minus aqueous. That's the first half. Second half, uh, we leave the solids together. So PbI2 solid plus 2K plus aqueous plus 2NO3 minus aqueous. So let's look for our spectator ions. Those are ones that are the same on both sides, same state, uh, same everything. So we can see the NO3, the nitrate is one there on both sides, and so is the potassium. So in our net ionic equation, we're going to cross these four out, or these two out, and for our net ionic equation, we're going to have Pb. 2 plus aqueous plus 2i, oh, 2i minus aqueous, going to equal PBI2 salt. And this is our net ionic equation. So we have the relevant charges and we have states there. Now, using SNAP rules, this, of course, isn't soluble, and if you didn't, wasn't given in the question, that's how you determine that. But this essentially takes out everything that's not reacting, and it just puts the things that are. So obviously lead and iodine are reacting to perform that, to form that, and then that is our product. All right, so we did the first part of the equation, and this was our balanced equation here. Now we're going to move on to the second part. And it says, what is the, it asks, what is the mass in grams of lead to iodide formed? And that is our precipitate right here. So this is um, a question where we need to figure out what's the limiting reactant versus what's the excess reactant. At least that's the way I do it. Um, now this is another part where we need to be careful of our significant figures. And looking at these, the smallest number of them is going to be three. So we're going to round everything to three significant figures going forward. And now we're going to find the limiting reactant versus excess reactant. Now that's where these numbers come into play, the molarity and the volume of the solutions. Well, that's how much is actually being given 
to feed the reaction. So we can use that and we can use the molarity formula to find the number of moles to do that stoichiometry to find the limiting and axis reactant given these numbers. So for the lead 2 nitrate, it's going to be 0.1 molar equals x moles over 0 0.075 liters. 0.1 times 0 0.075 is of course going to be 0 0.0075 moles of lead 2 nitrate. And that's how much is actually in the reaction. Same deal over here, 0.19 molar equals x moles over 0.1 liter. 0.19 times 0.1 is going to be 0 0.019 mole. 0 0.019 moles of potassium iodide. And now with these two, we can use some stoichiometry to help us figure out what the limiting versus excess reactant is. Let's start with this term over here, the lead to nitrate. So 0 0.0075 moles of Pb uh, 32. Our coefficient for that term is 1, so 1 mole of that. Usually you put the compound name here, but I'm a little bit pressed per space, so I'm not going to do that. And of course, there's 1 mole of PBI2. No, why not? PB and O3, 2. And because it's asking for the mass in grams, we're going to go all the way to grams, all the way to the other side. So we need the molar mass of the lead to iodide, which does happen to be 461 grams per mole. And we're going to see that when we put this in our calculator, 0 0.0075 times, of course, 1 over 1 times 461 is going to be 3.46 grams. 3.46 grams of lead iodide. And of course, that's with our significant figures. Let's do the same thing for the potassium iodide over here. 0 0.019 mole Ki. two moles of Ki here, because that's our coefficient. We get these coefficients from this number here. This number here is the same as this one. There's a one here, it's understood, so we're just going to put mole of PBI2 and all the way to grams, so 461 grams per mole. If we put this in our calculator, 0 0.019 times 1 over 2 times 461, we get 4.38 grams equals 4.38 grams of PBI2. Now that's again with our two significant figures, three significant figures, excuse me. So which one is the limiting reactant? The limiting reactant is the one that has the lower number here. In that case, that is this one. That's a really big circle, let's make that smaller. And in this case, that makes this reactant, the lead to nitrate, the limiting reactant, and this one, the excess reactant. And we know that because uh, the ratio between these two means this one the lead 2 nitrate is going to run out before this one does. So, by logic, this lead 2 nitrate has to be the one that governs, dictates how much of the lead iodide will form. And so, with that in mind, we can say that 3.46 grams of PBI2, our precipitate, will form. That is the answer to part B. All right, so we're on to the third and final part of this question, and it asks, what is the molarity of each of the ions listed here in the resulting solution? So for this one, we get to use molarity more extensively than in part two. Uh, we're going to use the properties of a reaction to understand what's going on. So the first thing we're going to look at is what's the limiting reactant, what's the access reactant. We did that in part two over here. Let's do nitrate is, in fact, the limiting reactant. And... This is the excess reactant. So the concentration of Pb lead 2 plus, represented by brackets, square brackets, is going to be 0 molar. And this is because lead is in the limiting reactant, uh, which means it's going to run out first. But it's also in the precipitate, which means that it's not going to be in the solution. Anything that comes out of here is going to form that solid. And because this runs out first, there's going to be none of it left over in the resulting solution. So the concentration of 2 plus is going to be 0, so we'll cross that one out. No, we'll leave it there for now, I guess. Now, 
we're going to look at the concentration of the nitrate and the potassium. And these two are a little bit easier. So let's look at our net ionic equation. If we were to write out another net ionic equation here, and here we would see that the potassiums here are, are and this is not balanced. Okay, well, let's balance this really quick. The spectator ions here are the potassium ions and the nitrate ions over here. And so that means the concentration of the aqueous potassium nit the aqueous potassium ions over here and the aqueous nitrate ions on the first side are going to be the same as their concentrations over here. Uh, and so that means they're not going to change. There's going to be nothing that changes. So we just have to calculate one and we're good. Um, the only thing that changes here is the volume of the solution because it does say resulting solution. And all that means is we combine the 100 milliliters up here with this 75 milliliters, uh, 0.175 liters, and we just solve molarity from there. So we're going to go ahead and start with the NO3 minus, the nitrate O3 minus is going to be equal to how many moles? Well, in this reactant, there are two moles of nitrate per one mole of lead two. Uh, so we just take 0 0.0075, multiply it by two, and we get 0 0.015 mole over the liters, which is just 100 milliliters plus 75 milliliters, is of course 0.175 liters in total. And that's going to give us our answer as 0 0.015 divided by 0.175 is going to be 0 0.0857 molar. 0 0.0857 molar. And remember that's because of our significant figure, so we round to three. Same deal with the potassium because it is a spectator ion. Um, we have the same sort of process here. So we see that there's just one iodine or one potassium per iodine in this reactant, and it's the same over here. Um, and this other aqueous product, so it's 0 0.19, 0 0.019, excuse me, 0 0.019 moles over same volume, 175 liter, because it is the same solution. 0 0.019 times 0 0.1, or divided by 0.175, it's going to give us 0 0.109 molar for that. And those are the concentrations of lead to plus nitrate and potassium. And the concentration, finding the concentration for the iodide uh, minus ion is a little bit more complicated, but it's nothing we can't handle. Uh, the only thing that makes it a little bit different than the others is that there is some uh, in the solution that's aqueous and some in the precipitate that is solid because of the principles of limiting an excess reactant right here. Um, so we're looking for the amount that's in the solution. And to do that, uh, we're just going to use a little bit of math and chemistry magic here. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the amount of iodine that's in here, the amount of moles that's in here. And I'm going to use the limiting reactant here because this is what's going to determine how much it's going to form. So we're going to say 0 0.0075 moles of lead to nitrate. It's going to be uh, just 1 over 1 here. I'm just going to shorten it like that. Um, that's how many moles of this are going to form. Um, but we're looking for 2 moles of iodine per 1 mole of PBI2. And this is going to equal 0 0.0075 times 1 over 1, of course, times 2 over 1. This is going to equal 0 0.0 one five moles. Now, and this is going to be in the precipitate. Precipitate. Uh, and so the difference, we can take um, this number here, draw a little arrow down here, and this number here. Uh, and we can subtract the two. So this is how much we're starting. This is how much in the precipitate. So the other ones go. The difference has to go in the solution. It's going to be 0 0.019 minus 0 0.015. 0 0.019 minus 0 0.015. We get 0 
equals 0 0.004 moles of the iodine minus we'll label that up here too and with this information we can go ahead and find our molarity our concentration using this number so it's going to be 0 0.004 over the same volume as these other ones 0.175 liter 5 and that's going to the concentration in the solution is going to be 0 0.0229 molar and that is the concentration of iodine minus in the solution